My mom always called me a mermaid. I have no idea why, because I didn't even know how to swim. I don't have a relationship with the water before Harbor School. I never been on a boat. I never learned how to swim. Never been to an island, well, Brooklyn and Manhattan. I learned how to swim with the school. I learned how to drive boats with the school. I got my certifications from the school, everything from the school. Sign right in, okay? Go right in. What's up? Ready for this year? Today is the first day of school. We welcome 570 students to Governor's Island. I take the ferry over with the students when I can. I enjoy doing it. Are you all in your studies right now? One of my favorite parts of the first day at Harvard School is when the 12th graders, they line up and they clap for all of their uh, underclassmen. You guys are the class of what? 2020. 2020. <laughs> 2022. That's a lot of twos. That's a good year. It's like a solid 2022. I was right out of college. I went directly to work at Riverkeeper through AmeriCorps. And I was involved in every single aspect of protecting and learning about the Hudson River. And I learned so much and I thought, this should be school. Here in New York City, as an example, there are 1.1 million public school kids. How many of them have fallen in love with their local ecology? How many? I talked to my roommates about, I kind of want to start a school about like the Hudson River and New York Harbor. And one of my roommates said, you should meet my uncle, Richard Kahn. Our idea was starting schools with themes that would be exciting for kids, make them want to come to school. And I couldn't think of anything more exciting than, uh, than what he was proposing in terms of the Harvard School. He said, I'll do it with you. And he never let up on making every part of that happen. I want people that are on fire. And he fit that. My next call was to Peter Neal, who ran the South Street Seaport Museum, the nation's premier maritime museum in Lower Manhattan. But my response was, Murray, would you like to see what your school will look like? And he was somewhat taken aback because I had founded in New Haven, Connecticut, a school that was almost identical. And so Richard Kahn and I and Murray went out to New Haven and saw the future. So to have a relationship between an educational organization like New York Harbor School and a museum like the South Street Seaport Museum is logical. We have ships, we operate ships, they have students who are learning to operate ships. More broadly than that though, I would suggest that there is nothing at all that can't be taught better on a ship. Mayor Bloomberg put out in the fall of 2002 a request for proposals to start new small schools. He created this huge effort to phase out the largest, worst performing high schools in the city and to replace them with small theme-based schools. We were basically looking for people who had ideas about what a new high school experience could be. And so you can imagine how exciting it would be to have the idea of a harbor school where young people would be learning about um, marine biology, water resources, and it was probably one of the more unique proposal ideas that were out there. I actually held a fundraiser at CBGB's and had all my friends do a talent show. And we raised $1,200 and we bought an ad in the New York Times for principal of a high school. I had been a teacher in New York City since the mid-90s and was teaching in a second chance school in the South Bronx. And Murray Fisher gave me a call out of the blue. I went up to the Bronx I sat down with Nate and told him what I was trying to do, and he said, I'm not necessarily a maritime or environmental guy, but I love this mission. I think it sounds really important. I'll help you start it. I really was kind of taken by the idea, and I saw the power of what this school could be. We put together a team, and we found Roy Arezzo, who was a science teacher at a middle school at the time. I met Murray at an event for rowing and boat building. He told me the theme of the school. I said, that is a theme that needs to happen, and it hasn't happened in too long, and I would like to help be part of it. One of my fondest memories was of the planning team process. Teachers, students, 
parents, the community partner representative would come together to work through the idea of well, what's this school really going to look like. We opened in September of 2003, seven teachers. I was the director of the school and Nate was the principal. You know, the graduations are wonderful for me because it's the one time I can sit back and look at kids going across the stage and saying, you know, because Marie and I had an idea, there they are. Before coming to school, I had never been to this area. I don't go out much. I didn't even know Governor's Island is six And then um, they came to my school and they did a presentation and it was like something that was totally different. I never knew about aquaculture before, like I didn't even know it was a thing. But like when you learn about it, it makes sense. I really like about the school is that it's small and that you get more of like a new time with your teachers. In these two big tanks and in these barrels we have um, oyster larvae that have set on shell. Um, we call it spat on shell, which is how we make our oyster reefs. All those little tiny dots, those are all little baby oysters that have set and they're growing on that shell. Oysters, I feel like, are so underrated because like they do so much. I grew up on the Fishers Island Oyster Farm in Fishers Island, New York. Oysters, I think more than just about any other keystone species, have the ability to get people excited about them, which is sort of surprising given what they look like and what they do. So the Billion Oyster Project grew out of the aquaculture program. It's where it started, growing oysters to restore New York Harbor. But it quickly became apparent that you didn't just need oyster farmers to restore the harbor, you need boat drivers and scuba divers and vessel operators. The seven current technical education programs all work together to grow and plant a billion oysters in New York Harbor. Right now we're loading these 422 reef structures onto this barge. So they were built over the last year by students in the Harbor School Welding Program, the Marine Systems Technology Program. Most of our reefs have live oysters on them that are grown by students in the Harbor School Aquaculture Program. The monitoring is led by students in the Harbor School Marine Biology Program. The structures are, are, structures are designed by students in the Ocean Engineering Program. They're placed underwater by students in the Professional Diving Program. And often the staff, students, and reef structures are brought to sites by the students in the vessel operations program. And so the Billion Oyster Project provides this complex narrative that re requires collaboration. Through Billion Oyster Project, we're getting these huge government contracts to restore oysters in Jamaica Bay off the coast of Staten Island. These are all multi-million dollar, multi-year grants. And yet, who were we having do the work with us? High school students. I didn't come from a family that went to college, and I always thought college was the most important thing. Well, I still think it. I'm planning to go to either SUNY Maritime or the Coast Guard Academy. Yeah, if I have money. Honestly, once my freshman year started, I always thought about boats, 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 boats. It's not everybody that gets to say we take a ferry to school or I get to be by the water instead of in a classroom all the time. I don't know, it's just kind of nice that um, we're kind of special. You got to appreciate that you're getting this opportunity and a lot of kids will love to have this opportunity and especially that everything is like free. I'm very glad that New York Harbor School is a public school and amongst all the other schools in New York City, it is very special. It's the only maritime high school in New York City. Harbor School is not a school that you have to test into. It is not a school that is screened. And that really does touch on our founding principle that the school was designed and open to serve underserved students that wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity of being in the water. It was all these crazy high schools that were opening up all over the place. The school for environmental impact and you would ask, well, what do you teach about the environmental impact? Oh, nothing. It's just the name of our school. And I heard about the Harbor School and I thought it fell right into the rest of the schools because why would somebody open up the Harbor School on a hill in the middle of Bushwick? So. <clears throat> Depending on who you talk to, there's roughly 600 miles of coastline in the five boroughs of New York City. Most of us, and I for sure, assumed that a maritime high school would be located on the water. I always 
picture in my mind a bunch of practical jokers somewhere in the New York City DOE deciding to open up a maritime high school pretty much as far away as possible from any body of water. The institutional history has it that the school opened in Bushwick. However, the first classes in the first year were actually held in the galleries of the museum, an almost unheard of uh, situation for a museum anywhere. It meant that from the beginning, the school and its students were immersed in an authentic experience. So the next year, uh, I was voted as vice president for career and technical education of this union, and I went and visited this harbor school. I just had to go and see it. And when I got there, I said, oh boy, this is not like the other schools. This is completely different. They had a scuba diver. They had a boat builder. Uh, they had people who understood marine biology, yet they all had regular academic licenses. Well, when I was in middle school and high school, I don't remember ever leaving the classroom. And it's so inspiring to see the Harbor School students, they're out there solving real world problems. They're gonna take that home and their enthusiasm is contagious and it's going to infect their parents and their siblings and their relatives and spread and ripple out throughout the community. And it's gonna position them well for being leaders and addressing the environmental problems that are coming over the next generation. The success of the Harbor School matters because it demonstrates a variety of innovations that must be emulated uh, elsewhere. The Harbor School has met and exceeded my every expectation. And I hope that the kids have exceeded theirs. That was the intention.